Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you're going to learn about how to navigate the Cisco iOS command line. Now, the way it's going to be done is through a live demo in the lab. And because I've got a heap of tips and tricks to show you for how to make your way around the command line, to save you taking your own notes as we go through here, I'm also going to attach a PDF, which is a summary of everything that we're going to cover here. The scenario you see here is I've got a brand new router, I've taken it out of the box and I've hooked up a console cable and then I've powered the router on and it's currently going through the boot up process. And because it is a brand new router, it's going to ask me, would you like to enter the initial configuration dialog? If I entered yes here, it would take me to a command line driven wizard, which would help me do the initial setup. It's not commonly used. Normally we'll enter no here. So that's what I'll do here. Ask me, would I like to terminate auto install? Yes, I would like to terminate that. I'll see my interfaces on the router coming up and then I land at the user exec prompt. Now, we're not commonly going to be working at the user exec prompt because there's a very limited set of commands that we can enter here. If I want to see what those commands are, I'll enter a question mark. So I just hit question mark on the keyboard there and it shows me all of the commands that are available at user exec mode. Notice down at the bottom, I, I see more here. This indicates that there's additional commands, additional output that I could see. I can hit the enter key and that will scroll through it line by line. But this would be a fairly tedious way to scroll through a lot of output. So what I'll do instead is I'll hit the space bar and that's going to scroll through it page by page. So I can just hit the space bar multiple times until I get to the end of the output there. Notice in putty over on the right here, I can scroll back through the previous output. Now, by default in putty, it doesn't include a lot of lines of scroll back. So what I can do to improve that is go up in the top left here, right click and change settings. And if I then go to the window tab, I can set my lines of scroll back here to 2000. I've done that already. By default, you're going to see a much smaller value here. And that can be annoying because sometimes you do need to scroll back through quite a few lines of output. So I'd recommend that you set this to a high value. OK, so you saw that I can hit the question mark to see all of the available commands that are available at this level in the command hierarchy. And as I said earlier, there's not really a lot that I can do at the user prompt. So I'm going to go to privileged exec mode. To get there, the command I need to enter is enable. So I hit enable and notice that the command prompt changes. When I was in user exec mode, the prompt showed the name of my router, which is just router, the default right now, and then a greater than symbol. But when I go to the privileged exec mode with the enable command, it changes to show the host name and then a hash. So you can tell by the command prompt what level you're currently at. If I wanted to drop back down to the user level, which normally you wouldn't want to do, I can enter the disable command. Okay, so now I'm going to go back up to the privileged exec mode, which is also known as the enable prompt. And I'll show you that we can use command abbreviation here. So rather than typing in the full command enable, I can just say en and hit enter, and that will bring me back up. And I could also use an abbreviated command to go back down to the user prompt again. So I'll try entering di and hit enter. But what I see now is that this is an ambiguous command. The reason for this is whenever you use command abbreviation, there has to be just one possible unique match. 
So if I now enter di and a question mark, it will show me all of the possible commands that begin with di. And you can see that there's three possible commands here, dir, disable, and disconnect. So when I typed in di, it didn't know which one I meant. So if I wanted to actually put in the abbreviation for disable, I'd have to enter D-I-S-A and it would now know, okay, there's only one possible command, I must mean disable. I don't need to go back down a level though, so I'll just stay at the enable prompt for now. Next up, I'm going to check what all commands begin with S-H. So I'll enter S-H and a question mark and I can see there's only one possible command which is show. On Cisco routers and switches, you will use the show command a lot because we use it to get information about the device. So the shortest way we can type that is just sh. If you want to see what the available show commands are, I'm going to put the same command in, but I'm going to have a space now. So it's sh space and then question mark. When you include a space, it shows you all of the possible keywords for that particular command. So this is the context sensitive help now. So again, I can see all my different show commands there. I'll hit the space bar to scroll through all the different options. If I wanted to break out of a command output without scrolling all the way to the end, I can hit the control button and see at the same time that will break out of the command. And if I scroll back, you'll notice the first available option there was show AAA. So let's use that for our example and show you how you can figure out commands with the context sensitive help. So if I type in show AAA space question mark, it shows me all of the available options that would be available after show AAA. So if you need to enter a particular command, but you can't remember exactly what command you needed to enter, this can be really helpful in that situation. Similarly to the command abbreviation, we can also do tab completion as well. For example, you see my first option here is show triple A accounting stop cache. That's quite long to type in. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna say show triple A ACC, which makes it a unique match. And now I can hit the tab key and that will auto complete the entire word for me. While I'm at the command line, I can use the backspace to delete what I'd entered already. So that's what I'm doing here. And let's deliberately put in a typo here. So notice I've put show triple A accounting stop quiche. That should be cash. So I've put in a typo. If I hit enter, you'll see I get the error message invalid input detected. When you get this error, it's usually because you put a typo in. And I can see the, the marker here shows me exactly where that typo was. Let's have a look at another error. So if I do show triple A and hit enter, you see the error I now get is incomplete command. I have to carry on with the command by putting in one of these additional options here. If I do a show run question mark as an example, carriage return, that means that I could hit enter. These are all optional keywords. I don't have to enter one. I could actually hit an enter here to get some output. So at the enable prompt, that's where we'll most commonly be using show commands. The other main command we'll use here are debugs. So I could enter debug space question mark and I'll see all of the possible debugs here. The difference between a show command and a debug, when you enter a show command, it gives you point in time information, information about the state right now. When you do a debug, what will happen is that the output will be updated in real time. So for example, if you were debugging OSPF and an OSPF packet came in, you would see it show up as and when the packet came in. Okay, next thing I want to show you is how to actually make configuration changes on the router or switch. At the enable prompt, that's mostly for information there. To actually make changes, we go to global configuration. To get there, it's configure terminal. Now the abbreviation for this is you can just type in conf t. You'll use this command a lot, so you'll be using conf t a lot as well. 
Okay, while we are in global configuration, let's hit the question mark, see all the available commands here. So we could do that the same as we did at the enable prompt. If I hit control C to break out of this, another thing to notice is that the prompt changed again. So when we were at the enable prompt, the, the prompt showed our host name and then a hash. When we're at global configuration, it's router and then config in brackets. So the host name, config in brackets, and then a hash. Okay, we're up to the 10 minute mark in this lecture. I know when I'm learning, I don't like to sit too long. I like to take frequent breaks. So what I'm gonna do for this lecture is I'm gonna split it into two parts, which are gonna be about 10 minutes each. So go get yourself a coffee and I'll see you back here for part two. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.